use the anti-grade nailing for distal humeral shaft fractures. As we know that the uh, treatment of choice for the uh, femoral shaft fracture is mostly conservatively. But anyway, we have some problem with the alignment distraction and also joint stiffness of any uh, kind, uh, shoulders or elbow. For the operative treatment, most uh, of the patients prefer to use this because they want to return back for the jobs. And for the distal third fractures, uh, sometimes we face with difficulty to the uh, approach for the plate osteosynthesis, either uh, from the anterior or posterior. Especially for the fracture configuration that uh, have a long uh, oblique or uh, combinated fractures, which are very dangerous to uh, make a plate osteosynthesis in these lesions. For human shaft fracture, we have painful experience about using some kind of nails uh, has been uh, done from our team. Uh, we have a problem with sidle nail, which is very big, uh, and also large Taylor nail, uh, which is not suitable for Thai patients. Until the unlimbed humeral nail of the AO synthesis has been launched in Thailand, we found that this one is smaller and may be suitable for Thai patients. And for the surgical technique for this third of the femur, uh, humeral shaft fractures, we try to find the way to achieve uh, these methods. Anyway, we have problem with the uh, size of the dimension of the humeral shaft in Thai patients. We have a 3D uh, reverse engineering technique to search for the uh, size and dimension of the canal. And we found that the distal part of the humerus, they have no any mellow cavity. This is the metaphyseal bone. So if we want to leash uh, very deeply, uh, distally, we have to make uh, the passage for the nail insertions. And also we are searching for the mismatch between the anti grade nailing and lateral grade nailing manner. And we found that lateral grade nailing is very difficult and need, needs some uh, over-reaming and maybe uh, some trouble to create some uh, fracture of the distal part of the humerus. And also we cannot uh, save, uh, serve for uh, uh, fixation of the distal thirds. Uh, for the technique of our experience, we used the patient on a beach type position and step wound at just lateral to the acromion and very minimal penetration uh, using the small or reamer. And using T-hand reamer uh, to make the passage because we know that the humeral shaft have no any straight uh, canal. So that we use the T-reamer starting from the 6 millimeter uh, to, to, to measure to create the passage for the nail insertion until we reach the supra uh, condyla area just above the oricanon process or oricanon fossa. And also we uh, ream up to 7 to accept the 6.7 millimeter of unlimbed humeral nails. And we make sure about the, the length that required to leash this area by measure uh, using another T-reamer which is equal length so that we guarantee about the, the, the proper length and also the diameter that to be used in the patients. And after that, we use the unlimbed humeral nails insert down to the distal part of the humerus just above the oricanon fossa. And then every case, uh, we will try to lock the proximal uh, fragment every case to prevent upward migrations and also prevent uh, telescoping, some degree of telescoping that will create some impingement syndrome. This patient, the nail is uh, too short because we have the longest one in this patient because we take, intend to insert deep to the distal humerus. For the distal locking, we use the uh, uh, postural anterior approach distally, which is very easily because if you use the lateral approach, it will be very difficult for the flat bone. And using some trick to prevent uh, uh, loss of the control of the screw. And uh, lateral to medial approach for the distal locking is very difficult for the distal part fractures. Uh, from our clinical experience, about almost uh, uh, eight years, we have uh, 14 cases with a fracture located very distally. And this is our experience of uh, clinical uh, materials showing a good result of elbow, shoulder, range of motions. And also some patient, this one is an arm uh, resting fractures with very good metaphysis. And we found it very tight uh, metaphysial area that we need no any distal locking and put the patient on a sling for two and uh, two to three weeks and let a pendulum exercise and elbow gentle range of motions. And 
the final lesion is very good. And this is a young lady with very distal fractures and uh, the clinical results show very good appearance and also good lens motions. And this one, although we try to leach the center, but actually it's passed to the lateral and some angulation occur. We put in the patient on the arm sling for two to three weeks and the traction force uh, create a straightening uh, force to make uh, angulation lessen and also the range of motion can be increased from the beginning by uh, a gentle range of motion and the final is although they have some angulation but the clinical appearance is quite good and range of motion shoulder and elbow is very appreciated and this one also very good result and the appearance of the scar like this uh, from our experience we have four, 14 non pathologic fractures and uh, the result after four up uh, average for about uh, 11 months, we found union lesh, about four to uh, two months. And most of the cases have good uh, clinical outcome with only one case have uh, intraoperative splitting fractures. In conclusion, this technique is very simple, easy to operate and less invasive, short operative time and less radiation exposure with good results. Thank you for your attention.